Good evening, everyone in the gallery. Good evening, Councillor, and those and people joining via Zoom. It's 5 30, and we'll clear the meeting open. This meeting will be live streamed via Zoom webinar facilities, and recordings of council meetings or parts thereof cannot be copied, recorded, reproduced, or reused or transmitted without the prior written consent of the general manager. This meeting is being recorded and made publicly available on the council website, and persons attending the meeting should refrain from making any family statements. Council acknowledges that this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of Wiradjuri, Kamangara, and Dari people, and respects the history and culture of elders, both past and present. And I'll now call on, call on Janet Clayton to give a prayer. <laughs> Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom is yours, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just pray that as we come together tonight, these councillors, Father, they've all been nominated and accepted to be servants for Abron, not only for Abron really, but for you and for a wider community, because oftentimes their decisions will be heard and felt in other places as well as here. Father, I just pray tonight that as they deliberate on, on what they have to discuss, that they might really consider and deliberate on the debates that they'll be having, that there is usually two sides of the story. Father, I just pray that they might have patience, they might have wisdom, and that look to all the arguments and whatever comes up tonight, that they can look at both sides of the story. And I pray, Father, that they remember that they are here to serve the people of Abraham. They're here that they um, they put themselves forward to do. And Father, I just ask that they might remember that law that you gave us, do unto others as they would have us do unto them. And Father, I pray that as they deliberate on the, whatever they're talking about tonight, that they might consider mm -hmm. that, that they're here to serve the Abron people and the further wider community as well, if, if that's the, the case in whatever they decide. And Father, I just ask you be with them now as they go about their business tonight that they might consider all these things in their hearts and do the right thing as they soon. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. The uh, all council is present for this, this meeting. Um, the general manager is and we'll be joining via Zoom. And we have um, Matt with the corporate services director who is the acting general manager for this meeting. So there are no leaders that. Are there any declarations of interest? None? Okay. Thank you. Um, there's no presentations. We go to questions from the public. The public gallery is open to members of the community. And the community is to be given the opportunity to ask questions at the commencement of the council meeting. And the mayor is to ask the questions from the gallery prior to the commencement of the ordinary meeting. Members of the public wishing to address council are permitted to do so, provided the following guidelines are adhered to. 
the person asking the question at the council meeting must clearly state their name and in what capacity they are acting. If the person asking the question is acting as another, another person or organisation's agent, they must advise the council if they have their prior consent and authority. Questions from the public is not an opportunity to debate with elected representatives or staff. It's an opportunity for the community to ask a question in relation to an issue or put a point of view relating to an issue that may be causing interest or concern. Due to time constraints, a time frame of three minutes per speaker is allocated. All questions and comments must be directed through the mayor and in the, in the question. If it cannot be answered, it will be taken on notice and response given within a reasonable period. <coughs> the only opportunity for a council community member to address council during an ordinary meeting. Any questions from the gallery? Six over. Good evening all. My name is uh, Sikh Servic. I speak for myself and I want to talk about the budget. The funding statement on page 91 of the business paper indicates that the fiscal immediate 23, council expected to receive 692,000 for the disposal of plant equipment and land. Corresponding figure for fiscal year 24 is about 2 million. The items are labeled to gain on this total. If this is both about conventional sales, so the title of to the assets gain hands, the following adjustments to the accounts are required. If amounts shown actually are gained on the total, they need to be corrected. The funding statement should reflect the net cash receipt of the disposal of the disposal. The income statement on page 190 should be corrected to similarly contain these two items. An amount should be gains on this bond. Alternatively, if the amount represents just deposits, a relevant explanation could be provided. I have read Council's comments to my budget submission. They appear to be drafted by Ms. Max and I thank her for them. There have been significant improvements in the professionalism with which the budgets are compiled, commented, checked for numerical accuracy, and presented to the community in the short time with us. He and I disagree on the calculation of the operating ratio. This will fix itself over the next six months. In the meantime, the numbers speak for themselves, excluding gains and losses on sale of fixed assets and excluding capital grants and contributions. The council incurred an operating loss of 1.5 million in fiscal year 22, expects to lose 2.5 million for fiscal year 23, and budgets will lose 3.3 million for fiscal year 24. What is not contained in the business paper is a plan capable of arresting and correcting this deteriorating situation. Thank you. I'm Brian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is John Brian. I live at O'Connell Road, Oberon. I just like to ask uh, uh, a four question. It won't take a three minutes on my shoulder. I have it written, so I will read it if I may. I was under the understanding or impression that the council was going to call shortly a public meeting to ask what the community regarded as important. I have subsequently been advised that the con uh, a consultant has been employed to carry out a survey on behalf of, of the council. If this is correct, and based on my concern that I may not be contested, I wish to ask the following to be noted. It is 
it is my opinion, and I think many others, that the most important expectation of the community is that the matter or cancel process be only dealt with honesty and transparency. I believe uh, Janet uh, Clayton mentioned that in her, her prayer. Um, I believe that we have a good report on the council meeting from our mayor in the local paper, but there's never ever any figures what it was going to cost and what it has cost in the you know, going forward. Um, it, it is my, uh, my opinion that many of the most important expectations of the community is the matter of camp off the river. <laughs> to do this, the council must ensure before starting any major project, the cost is confirmed and the source of the fund is identified and secured. Um, we don't get any figures at all in the local paper. Um, the mayor tells us what's going on, and I believe that goes a long way toward what I'm asking. But um, major projects, I believe, would include, say, the, the, the sport ground at uh, O'Connell, the pub at I have spoken quite often outside council on what I think of that. And I think our mayor knows my opinion of what happened there, but there's been no cost um, declared on it, what it was uh, to be started, when it started, what it's cost since, and when it might be finished. Um, I think the general public needs to have some idea of what is happening there. Um, That's three minutes from, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. John, in, in response to um, all those projects that have been figures provided in the business paper with the, with the cover document uh, and other documents we have. Uh, what you need? What you need? Hey. Well, well, Come forward, come forward. Come forward. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. I haven't put them in the papers. No, no. Um, they're often quite exhausting documents. Okay. Any of those projects, if you want to find out exactly what they've cost and how we've gone about them, it's in it's in here. And if you want want someone to help you through the process, we can do that. Oh, great. That that would be great. Yeah. Thanks very much. Um, used to be the works committee last time had a summary of all the projects and costing and again chart of the schedule. It was in the last work in the works committee meeting committee. and they're on, they're on publicly available. Yeah. Okay. Right. If I come down here, I can find them here. Yep. Yep. Oh, thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. And let's speak it always on the home for myself and nobody else. Uh, I have a very short question tonight. And that is, I understand that the council believe their role is mute in regards to the decision related to the biodigester goes by goal, goes by goal. Also, council council cannot be seen as supportive of protesting. About the location of the biodigester. I've even heard that if the council has seen the support of the issue, the concerns of the community, they will be excluded from the council estate. I'm amazed that this is even being stated. The council is an identity allowed by the state to find the people who live by the community. To represent their desires and points of view. It has always been the position reflected as part of the modus operandi of our council. There seems to be a position taken um, that the council is on a separate organisation from the community. 
I realize that the state holds the power of decision in the board matter, and the council and the council's involvement is different than all. I have reviewed the act and other guidelines, as far as I can see, the council would be doing a long bow to have the position take the mission of Congress Park. Recognizing that I've been out of that for some time, there may be a chance that there have been changes that I have not been aware of. I do not wish to take up the council's time tonight with this, but I'm asking that uh, if there haven't been changes, whether the general manager could advise me and tell me where I should go. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Thank you, everybody, and hello. Getting quite a habit. For the record, my name is Kathy Sajewicz, and I'm representing the Friends of the Ogre and Library this evening with their full commission. Thank you for considering the option for the Friends of the Oberon Library to utilise the space in the old community centre building. I think most of the councillors are aware of the role schools play in our community and will have read the correspondence attached to the report item. All funds raised by schools through book sales and or events go to providing extras that may not be covered by the library budget. One of the main sources of funding for the group is through our very popular recycled book sale which has previously raised several thousands of dollars annually. Like every other community group, our activities were affected by COVID, then of course the closure of the library for the rebuild, and we look forward to moving forward from here. Councils would no doubt be aware that the storage of recyclable resources donated by the community and the Oberon Library for resale were previously stored in a container located behind the library, since removed. Without an easily accessible permanent storage facility for the recycled book, which can number in the thousands, schools will no longer be able to facilitate the service to the library or the community, an opportunity missed. The popularity of book sales with both locals and visitors is strong. Book lovers like to see their much loved books go to new homes and generating income for the library is an added bonus. In Chambers, New South Wales and in many other places, permanent bookshelves have been established successfully. Should the project to be discussed this evening be approved by council, schools can quickly set up the same in Oberon. A shed that is permanently stocked with the recyclable re recycled resources is open every week and is manned by volunteers. This will be a great option for school. Many of our members are senior in age and the task of carrying boxes of books to and from book sales is becoming more and more difficult. A permanent home is an ideal solution. I'm sure a book shed would be an attraction for over on tourists and residents alike. As an added bonus, the place can be shared, allowing different groups to meet. I know there are at least two community groups that meet in the evening, and due to its isolation from the main building, the space could be a solution to any staffing or security issues arising from these groups using the main community centre. Should this project be approved, schools will pursue grant funding to assist with the purchase of internal infrastructure such as building. However, we have enough to start up the setup of book shed in Oberon, and I look forward to a positive response from the interest of the Oberon community. I note that schools fully realise that should it be approved, any arrangement to establish a book shed in the building would be subject to change when plans are formed for the future development of that space. And I would really appreciate if the item could be put forward in the business paper this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else? You made it. Very, very formal. Very nice. How long days made it? We'll bring that forward then. All right. Uh, item eight point one, the confirmation of minutes of the 15th of May 23 meeting. The minutes of the auditor meeting will be held on 
Building 16 of May 2023 being confirmed. Move the statement. Councillor Hayden. Councillor Springbar. Councillor Hayden. Yes, um, nothing to say. Anyone else? No, in favour? Passed unanimous. Item 8.2. Um, that's the extraordinary main brackets works committee of the 6th of June 2023. The recommendation is that the minutes of the extraordinary meeting works committee held on the 6th of June 2023 to be confirmed. Councillor Hayden. Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden. Yes, um, I'm happy to move the um, meeting minutes. I did want to put a note on the um, section regarding the Aboriginal Yarn Circle that um, it's not grant funding, but they will do funding if we approve through the other committee. So, um, just to get that noted. So, it's still, still funding coming from that, that group. The people, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, I'm more than happy to second those. Thanks. And anyone else? Councillor Hayden. I'll put the motion all over in favour. The motion's passed. <clears throat> item 9.1, the mayoral minutes. Recommendations report item 0901 if you see the information. Can I have a second of it? Councillor Hayden. Any other comments? Councillor Kibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wondering, um, I noticed that uh, you and Councillor Pemba attended the meeting with Gary Hawke and Chris Muldoon and Alex Muldoon, where the um, attitude of Mayfield. I was just wondering if you got any comments in relation to that meeting. Um, yes. That's coming. No, you know, Mr. Uh, Muldoon did make some comments here at the presentation. I, I know. All right. Um, this was a meeting called by Mr. Muldoon. Uh, I, I received a phone call on the Friday night before that, noting the Sunday meeting. Uh, and he wanted to quote. Uh, Meet with me, uh, give an update on where Mayfield is going. Um, I never go to meetings like that by myself, so I invited uh, Councillor Trimbath to come along. Um, and it was a meeting about where um, Mayfield is going, but it was primarily about the proposal of the Forestry Commission to put some deadlines in the state province. There was some discussion about their. Um, proposed eco uh, well, motor hotel, mm -hmm. um, and those two issues were linked uh, quite strongly. Um, we had a cordial meeting and um, um, went away an hour later was, and went back to about our business for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's, Mr. Muldoon is now. Um, very much part of the um, over on against wind, wind tower. Um, and um, I provided some information about what the, you know, who's, who's, what the proponents doing, what the timelines are, all those sorts of bits of information. Uh, and he is now uh, planning a campaign on this. Right. And if I could top of page 45. Um, did you make any comment on the Taranar Valley Community Group? Taranar Station. Oh, yes. I think you were, I, I assume you've got, you had correspondence in your attendance, so I oh, assume yes. you could give us an update on it. Um, well, it wasn't Taranar Community Group per se, it was, it was the, the Heritage Railway people, mm -hmm. uh, but that's where the invitation came from. Um, there were two very impressive steam trains, uh, some impressive um, carriages, uh, a whole bunch of people from transport for New South Wales, and it was all about the railway station. And it was 
officially cold day. Uh, and uh, but it was a very fun thing to do on a, again on uh, well, well, those Friday morning. We could have stoked the engine, that would have got you all. Oh, I stood by the boiler, <laughs> stood by the boiler. The ribbon was interesting. The ribbon was interesting, it was actually open, and the, the key element of infrastructure, infrastructure of the Karana railway station is a toilet. <laughs> and there hasn't been a toilet there for 30 years, apparently. Oh, yeah. So the ribbon that was cut was actually a length of a toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> There is a classic photo. There is, yeah, the uh, the the, the digni dignitary yeah. um, asked some interesting comments as she was using her parents as the life of the toilet paper. Didn't have to race before. Okay. No, <laughs> but it was it was it was it was great. Uh, Transport New South Wales brings a lot of effort to get the two train trains up there, and yeah, and I'll also note that it had a, a diesel engine on the back pushing. Because we're getting beyond those trains and they don't didn't go up over the mountain too well. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so great day. Thank, Thank you. Um, and if I could, two thirds of the way down that page 45, I noticed that um, the Forestry Corporation have indicated that they will, uh, once they've chosen a proponent, yep. um, they will provide them with information about existing stakeholder concerns. Mm -hmm. um, are they intending that that proponent should meet with council and or community groups? Um, I this is a result of an email I sent to Gavin Jeffries right. saying um, thank you for doing the presentation and, and asking the question of whether when the proponents for the proponents for each forestry area we go them would they in fact. Um, be aware of the community's concerns. Um, now, this is a little way away yet, but I would expect that the plan to come and meet with council as well. Maybe not at a council meeting, it might be a sort of information session for us, but um, we need to we will be doing that at some point. Thank you very much, Mr. Anyone else? All right, I'll put the, put the motion on the paper. Motion is passed unanimously. There are no notices of motion. No Councillor and delegate reports. Uh, first one is the Central West New South Wales Joint Organisation Board meeting on the 24th of the 25th of May in Canberra. Recommendation for Council to make the delegate report regarding the Central West New South Wales Joint Organisation Board meeting held on the 24th of May. And the discussion with federal ministers and the representative of the 25th of May. Councillor McGibbon, Councillor Hayden, Councillor McGibbon. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I know that um, you, Mr. Mayor, chaired a large part of the second day with the ministry and, um, and did it very, as I said at the time, very adroitly when ministers were arriving at a very odd time. Well, and um, unexpectedly, but then didn't think they were arriving and they suddenly arrived, appeared. So it was very good time. But the the discussions with a number of these ministers were were very interesting. Um, in particular, the, I'd say the Minister for Communication Minister for Communications and the advisor for the Minister for Communications um, were very informative. And um, look, um, they all seemed very open to understand the joint organization and and what we stood for and to work with the region. So I think it was very proactive, the second day in particular, and um, thank you for the, uh, the report that uh, sets it out uh, very clearly. I'm more than happy to move this report. Thank you. Happy and to both. second, nothing further to add. It was a very well written report, thank you. Um, I would just, anyone else got a comment? I'd just like to add that I was down in Canberra again um last Thursday and Friday and on Friday it was the first Australian local council um uh local yeah. Australian local government council. The we started with the Prime Minister and worked our way through most of the cabinet over the day. Um and there was lots of discussion about 
various programs and money being provided to local government. But I think the, the theme was that came through more than anything else was that this government wants to actually work with local government, which I think is a little bit quite refreshing. Um, and they see, they, they said a number of times that, that uh, they see local government as a reliable partner in doing many, and undertaking many tasks. And if I could comment, Mr. Mayor, I think, yes, um, and I, I've noted your previous comments at the last meeting. Um, it seems to be a slightly different view on the uh, the worth of local government from the federal sphere to the state sphere. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if I can put it that way, diplomatically. Um, the federal government uh, ministers, certainly when I was there for that part of the day, I seemed to want to work um, with local government, yes. Uh, I often watch a Christian chant, and the speaker often uh, last week was uh, each day noting local government representatives in the gallery and uh, their names and which council they are from. So I was waiting for your name to come up. I was going to be driving back at that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I'm quite optimistic about the federal government. The state government is a, is a slightly different Okay, well, anyone else? I'll put the motion all over in favour. Awesome. Uh, Country Mayor's Association meeting of the 26th of May 2023. Um, and just a quick note that the um, on says the minutes of the Country Mayor's Association holding Newcastle back in Sydney on the 26th of May. They're attacked. So the recommendation is note the council, uh, council note the delegates report regarding the Country Mayor's Association held on 26th of May at Parliament House, Sydney. Moving to second, Councillor Hayden. Councillor Hayden. Yes, I'm happy to the report uh, it was a very lengthy report um a lot of reading was done over the weekend um, nothing there on the same yeah. Um, what is happening with the regional roads reclassification? Because we've got, I think we had Sam Farrell there saying that it was all ready to go, and the government saying it was nowhere ready to go and nothing had been done about it. Moved. So there's a I think dichotomy of views there, I take it. Minister Aitchison makes it uh, reasonably clear um, uh, in the paragraph, second from the bottom on page 59. Yes. It says things have now moved on. Oh, okay. Which so means that it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen, or at least not in its current form. <laughs> and regretfully, I, if I could just, do we have any further comments by the Honourable Rose Jackson? Um, in relation to Wyangle, which I know has been a major issue for um, some of our other councils in our area. Um, and as and for us, yeah, there's both a car or a bottle of the press at 4 20 this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, so the honourable minister will be in parks on the 26th of June. That's when the conference on out there. And she wants to talk to the Central West JO uh, mayors and others about uh, weighing the event. Has the business case been completed yet? I have no idea. Right. Yeah. Ask <laughs> Sorry, but I know it's been a long time in coming. Well, the last last we heard about that from um, uh, Minister, Minister was that um, he thought it would be. Uh, Broader business case, um, and then we focused more on 
uh, sorry, to be more focused. And um, she was working towards that. So, so I, but beyond that, that, that I have no information. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Well, I'll put the motion will open fail. All right, uh, item 11.3, the IPWEA Local Roads Fund Record 2023. The recommendations of the Council receive and note the delegates report regarding the 2023 IPWEA Local Roads Fund Record. Have you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Councillor Hayden. Councillor Timber. Councillor Hayden. Yes, um, it's just a report outlining the recent um, Congress mm -hmm. down in Parliament House in Sydney. Um, I think the report speaks for itself, and attached to that is the communication for the local roads Congress as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Dean Chancellor Hayden, for the comprehensive delegate report, it's very detailed. Um, there is a supporting document that communicates as well. But I think uh, it's great reading, but you were probably take away from it that um, with the change of government, um, the impact is quite significant to anything over the great five. Um, and of course, there's ongoing discussion down in the ESL as well, but it's, it's a good conference. Very different to the prior one, with the different government in place. So. Any other comments? Motion is in favour? Uh, no, Item 12.1, Black Springs Community Hall Committee. Um, the recommendations of item 12.1 are to receive this information. Council Hayden, Council Timber, Council Hayden. Yes, um, I guess the normal minutes from the Hall Committee. Um, hoping that um, our kitchen progresses between the end of July, and I think that's all on target after the dip. Yeah. 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 And nothing further. Anyone else got any comments on this one? Mm. I'll put the motion all in favour. Community service for me. Item 12.2, the recommendation to count for receiving those minutes of the Community Service Committee held on 11th of May 2023. Councillor Graham. Councillor Trimba. Councillor Graham. Yes, I'd like to move the recommendation. Um, the Community Services <coughs> meetings are quite well attended. Um, it's quite good discussion. And so the main thing being looked at at the moment is the working party theme. Put together for um, the individual. Mm -hmm. I think the community welcomes that. Council Chamber? Uh, no, nothing for the action. Therefore, Council McKillop? Well, well I'm, I'm not uh, by any way um, suggesting otherwise, but I do notice that um, Councillor Katie Graham in the attendance is known as the Oberon Youth. Yeah, in the community. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you've got your fault. Um, uh, but I'm just wondering if uh, if the it's the right nomenclature for this meeting. <laughs> I'll 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 that uh, yeah. should, should take that as a as a compliment. <laughs> Inadvertent as it may be. <laughs> 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 Is there anything else from anyone? Yeah. All right, we'll put the motion on in favour. Pass it unanimously. Item 12.3 the Local Emergency Management Committee. Uh, recommendation to Council receive and note the minutes of the Local Emergency Management Committee meeting held on the 8th of May 2023. Move and second, please. Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Chamber, it's Councillor Hayden, Councillor McCarthy. Issue requirement, Mr. Mayor. Sorry? 
It's just a requirement to have this meeting. And the ministry does that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was nothing further to add to me. Good. Uh, okay. No one else? I think the clerk put the motion on the phone. Passed. Bottom 12.5. Oh, sorry, four and Youth Council. Overon Youth Council, the minutes of the Overon Youth Council meeting of uh, 23rd of May 2023. And the recommendation is that the Council receive and note the minutes of the Overon Youth Council. Councillor Graham. And Councillor. Councillor Graham. I'd like to put forward the motion that we approve the recommendation. That particular meeting, we had one member of the youth council there, apart from all the other people yeah. that come along as well. But it was quite an interesting discussion. So it was well worth having. And since these minutes, there's been a meeting at the high school which was very well attended. So hopefully, the next one, mm -hmm. which will be an after school one, the other one was at lunchtime, we'll get more interest coming back into the youth council, which would be great. Yeah. Um, yes, we did only have one question, but it's proof that um, quantity of quality, but you really did get some great feedback out of one person. So it's probably one of the best meetings of the year so far. And it okay. helped us you know, go forward with a bit of an interaction. So good meeting. Mm -hmm. no, to the chair, I absolutely agree. I think that was a very Good session that feedback, and I think we're on a good platform now to move forward with some good attendance. Um, and moving forward to the 25th for the next meeting. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? So, okay, Councillor Tucker. And uh, just noting, Mr. Mayor, that on this occasion, meeting of the Youth Council, Councillor Graham is not the yes. over on Youth Council Mayor. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'll put the motion on the paper. Oh. All right, traffic advisory local committee. Um, I have uh, an ultimate recommendation, which I would like to bring up. Can you do that? The, the old recommendation the council receive and note the minutes of the traffic advisory local committee meeting held on 11th of May 2023. Uh, the refuse the request for the location change to the accessible car park currently located at the NAB building and adopt the temporary delegation to council to facilitate more efficient and localized decision making for minor pedestrian and street track improvements in accordance with the Road Act of 1993 and authorization under the Road Transport Act of 2013. So, the mover and uh, Councillor McKibben, Councillor Tucker. Councillor McKibben. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Having read the minutes um, and what we've been advised, um, I think the proposed changes to uh, what was stated in the papers is absolutely appropriate, and I'm more than happy to move the recommendation in the way passed. Thank you, Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Yes, I, I agree in relation to the proposal to move the acceptable car park. And I clearly didn't have support, mostly because of concern that to build a curb ramp at that location in a way which meets 
the standards for vehicle flow slope would have to extend too far across the path. I, the existing ones, I don't believe, do meet the standards. But to add another one, um, particularly that's what the New South Wales Road system it would have to meet the standard. Um, and having just seen that uh, at the proposal, we did discuss the briefly the, the changes to the delegation to make it easier to uh, approve minor matters. I haven't looked through them in detail, but uh, um, based on the discussion of the meeting, I don't have any concerns about adopting those changes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? I put the motion all in favour. Motion is carried. Over on item 12.6, the Overrun Sports Facilities Committee meeting and the recommendation of the Council note minutes of the Overrun Sports Facilities Committee meeting held on the 7th of May 2023. We have a second by Councillor Hayden, Councillor Chimba, Councillor Hayden. Yeah, I'm happy to um, remove the recommendation to accept the support. I was going to query the attendance. I think that might be Councillor. Mm -hmm. McKechnie is at the top, but then down matters arising confirmed by Councillor McCarthy. Yeah, I think it may have. And um, just a minor correction down on page 112. Um, just a minor correction under the Spira and Cavalieros. Um, second paragraph towards the bottom be part with a P A double and not a PASD. That was all. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Councillor Tremba. Nothing to add. Put the motion. Oh, anyone else? Sorry. Put the motion all those in favour. Pass unanimously. All right, item 13.1, reports for decision. Mayoral and council fees 2023 24. 12.7. 12.7 Heritage Committee. Oh, sorry. I went one too far on my tab. All right, Heritage Committee meeting on the 29th of May 2023. Um, I also have a um, ultimate. ultimate um, Recommendation, can you bring that up, please? Aaron? Yeah. All right, and the ultimate. Uh, Recommendation is that the minutes of the Heritage Committee be held on the 29th of May 2023 be received with information that Council defer any consideration of introducing a heritage fund until the Heritage Committee review and provide input into the governance provisions. The review includes updates in terms of reference to the committee, appropriate policy, and identification of a funding source. And three, the Council seek any funding opportunities for Heritage New South Wales for repairs of St. Peter's English and Shirts of Monday Fall. We have a second to please. Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Tucker, Councillor McCarthy. Yeah, I, I agree. It shouldn't read the way it does. Mm -hmm. The idea was to see if we couldn't rekindle the $10,000 to a fund that can be uh, accessed by the Heritage mm -hmm. Committee and support small projects. But um, yeah, it's the minutes don't quite read as it was intended. Okay. Are you happy with that? Are you obviously? Yeah, I'll get voted for it. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Tuck. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was also going to query that number two as it was in the business paper because uh, uh, if we were going to consider it as part of the operational plan deliberations, mm. that would be in a few minutes' time. And I assume there's nothing included in there at, mm. at the moment. So that was going to make it a bit tricky. Mm. So, yes, I'm pleased to see that change and happy to second it. Thank you. Anyone else? No, it would be up to be 2024 25. Yeah, 
so apparent of this money from the state government that we're not pursuing this. You know, neighbouring council where I've got some information from, they get subsidised for the heritage of them. They also get 50 50 for any small project. So we've not been doing our own work, and I think it was, you know, I can't go back and knock it out. Anyway, it was there originally. So you're proposing an amendment to force it to investigate state government avenues that funding? Well, yeah. we've, we've, we've done it. We've, we've, we've cast the funding opportunities for very yeah. yeah. well. But I think that's why. Well, but it's, only, but it's only for one project. We, should we be looking at what broader? <coughs> To the chair, the in the grants report, we do have secured funding for the heritage advisor, the 50 50, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the heritage grants that we, we get annually that over a two years, over two years. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you want to, um, I mean, it's up to Councillor McCarthy's to the right. I think that would be covered in addition to after Martin Falls. And the other heritage other heritage opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You would be happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah. Oh. Okay, all right. We'll put the motion. All those in favor? Mark unanimous. Thank you. Thirteen one. Mayor on the Council for 2023 24. And recommendation of Council accept a 20% increase to Merrill and Council for 2023 24 financial year. In accordance with the determination by the local government remuneration yeah. for the 2023 24 operation plan. And should a 3% increase be accepted, endorse the councillor and mayoral monthly allowance for the 2023 24 at $1,014.10, um, which is $12,169.20 per annum. Bridge Councillor and two thousand two hundred and twelve dollars forty nine or twenty five six thousand five hundred and forty cents per annum for the mayor, exclusive of superannuation. So I move a second. So you need to put this in two parts with the mayor because it's the first one not passed and the second one. Well, the second one in laps. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Council mm -hmm. Timber. Council Hayden. Council Timber. Um, yes, I'd like to move that uh, we do accept the recommended 3% increase. We um, all, we didn't take the 2% uh, that was given to us last year. And I think that if we don't accept this 3% increase, um, we may get further behind and um, make it difficult in the future. In fact, maybe new people in the community, young people in the community, to take on the trials, and I don't think it's it's in the budget already allowed for, as was the two percent last year that we didn't pay. So I don't think a three percent increase is anything that we could die away from, considering the work that we do. Thank you. Yes, Councillor I agree with Councillor Trembus. Um, we possibly should have taken that um, increase last year. Um, council councillors do a lot of work in the background and a lot of running around, and to be able to attract younger people into the role they need to to be able to have some kind of a payment that can offset the time away from work so um i'm all for it yep so i support the free to see increase uh, just in relation to attracting younger people and working people I'd be surprised if the, the small increase in the dollars would make much difference to, to many prospective candidates. I would suspect that a bigger factor uh, could be meeting dimes and the amount of dimes that you need to put in 
uh, when people have full time work and perhaps families as well. I suspect that's probably a much bigger factor that puts people off, but that's just a positive thing. I tend to agree with that. I tend to agree with um, Councillor Tucker's observations. I think it's getting time off to go to meetings and if people are employed and, and oh, as you said, you know, families, etc. It's been difficult for people to either a, a full time job or running a business. I know we try and accommodate with 530 meetings, council meetings, but there are a lot of other out meetings, obviously, that are mm -hmm. outside that. You're giving some good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for the mayor, just just to, to clarify that uh, with the council and um, and their allowance, you are told to move within the band. So if down the down the down the track council it was to do to move within the band, you are able to go over and above that increase. It just relates to staying within the band. Mm -hmm. And also this year we've just been advised to actually um, resolve on the fee as well in the resolution with the procedural enhancement. That's why we've seen those in the in the paper as well. Mm -hmm. So if we're in the band, man, does that mean we can actually reduce our fees if we want to? Reduce the chair, you can absolutely. Any other comments? No. I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Against? Councillor McCarthy is against. All others in favour? Resolutions passed. Uh, 32 look at the request from Friends of Oberon Library. The council support the request from Friends of Oberon Library, Incorporated, to use the vacant super centre for storage and fundraising activities for a period of 12 months and review after that period. So I've moved and about it. Uh, Councillor McKibben, Councillor Hayden, Councillor McKibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've uh, read the proposal and the letter. And obviously, um, it all seems feasible in the current uh, state of with the current situation and with the Robert Hooper not being used uh, for the storage of these books. And I think it's a very worthwhile uh, use of this great book time. I'm more than happy to move with the um, resolution. Yes, it's more than, more than happy to say <laughs> being to a couple of libraries that actually have. Therefore, for sales kits that are situated near the library, I think it's a great idea, and it will um, get get some more people flowing through there as well. Okay. Uh, I couldn't find it in the report, but um, will the books be stored in a suitable containers so that if our staff need to use that space, to, it's not moving individual books. That's my concern. Through the chair, the understanding is that they will be stored on shelves within the space, so they will be a permanent um, fixture there. Yeah. So moving them in and out will be you know, more difficult. So they are looking to do more permanent shelf storage operation in the center. And just to add, this is just said that when you said that they could be applying the grant money to give them shelving, so that's the part of that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was assuming, and maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think the conclusion that the layout of the books would be in such a way that uh, that don't perhaps they might be around the walls and leave all the middle area available for other uses. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I personally don't think it's going to exclude other uses. Yeah. Um, it's just that most people have not focused on the old building. We will focus on the new building. Yeah. Um, and I think there are more, more, more options for people to actually share, share that space. And, and maybe that, that's something we need to not, not include in the resolution, but just uh, point out to the, to the schools to reflect uh, we would hope that it would be set up in such a way that the space is still available for the new and I think the fact that this is this is really a 12 month trial period, you can see how it works. Um, and it'll give an opportunity for other community groups to get their acts together and, and 
capture it when I want to have a bit of that size as well. Anyone else for the point? All right, for the motion, all those in favor? Thank you. It's passed unanimously. Integrated planning and reporting. <laughs> Recommendation in seven parts, <laughs> and we'll we'll um, I'll split these out individually, and we'll be voting on each one. Is that number one? Council adopt the amended draft 2022 to 26 delivery program. Item two: adopt the draft 23-24 operational plan and long-term financial plan. Item three: adopt the draft 23-24 statement of revenue policy. Mm -hmm. Item four, resolve to collect up to $555,722 in the 2023-24 town improvement levy and adopt the allocation of projects based on option three provided. Council, and item five, council endorse local road scenario two, vision and resealing of local rural council roads for inclusion in the operational plan. And six, authorize the general manager to make minor amendments to the statement of revenue policy to include outstanding statutory fees that have not been received. And seven, adopt the building asset management plan. Well, Mr. Mayor, could I suggest that we deal with one, two, three, six, and seven as one recommendation, and that the, con the more controversial ones, four and five, be a separate? One, two, three, six, seven. I don't think they'll be contentious then with three, six, and seven. I think it's in my brain. So I would move that one. You move that one? I'd move one, two, three, six, and seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think it would be clear you next. Know, I've got comments on a couple of those, not 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 suggested changes, but I just think it would make it easier if we went through one by one. Or one by one. Okay. Well, that was a bit. Let's let's just do this by by consensus. Who really wants to who wants to do one by one? Only, and happy to go with or happy to go with Councilor McKibben's suggestion of one, two, three, uh, six, and seven. Happy to do that. All right, well, that's all we'll do. Okay. With one, two, three, six, and seven. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to move this recommendation for one, two, three, six, and seven. We've all seen the delivery program, the operational plan, long term financial plan, uh, and the statement of revenue policy and draft. And we note the changes that have been made to those um, as a result of the period on exhibition and as a result of adjustments that have been made due to events that have arisen as subsequent to those documents being put on public exhibition. And I think it's uh, necessary to allow the general manager to make minor amendments, which is dealt with in recommended recommendation six. And the adoption of the building asset management plan, um, I think, goes without saying. So I'm more than happy to move those recommendations one, two, three, six, and seven. Yes, so I'm happy to second um, and agree with what the thing through the um, presentations. Um, we had our authorization for our general manager to make the minor amendments, and I'm happy to get in there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I said, I'm not proposing any changes to, to these motions or to any of the items in, in those plans, but I, I do just have some comments I'd like to make along the way. So, in relation to recommendation two, the operational plan and long term financial plan. Uh, that's where we effectively decide uh, what the rate increase is going to be for the next year. But really, we, we don't have an option. It's 3.7% because that's what we decided to compare the papers for a couple of months ago. Um, so just for the record, I would just like to, to say that uh, if we did have the option of a smaller increase, not that it's changed my mind, I would still have heard there's been a smaller increase and the 2.2% is what was uh, suggested at the time. So uh, so the fact that I'm supporting it, but will be voting for that doesn't mean that, uh, that I've changed my mind and, and happy with the 2.7%. The more important point I wanted to make on 
uh, recommendation number two, the operation plan and long-term financial plan. Uh, there have been some changes made to the roads funding matrix, which is included in the business paper. We got a, an earlier draft and, and uh, following discussion that I had with the general manager and, and a couple of staff, there have been some changes, which I have been very pleased to see those changes. Uh, one of them was essential if it hadn't been made now, it, it, it would have had to have happened at the first quarterly review because uh, there was simply not nowhere near enough money to seal local roads. The more important point is just to stress that based on the recommendations in the roads asset management plan, it sets out how much money uh, is needed to seal local roads maintenance unsealed local roads maintenance. In both of those cases, we are a long, long way short of having enough money to go anywhere near the figures set out in that roads as a management plan. Now, I know it's hard to find that, that much extra money. I don't have any further suggestions of, of where to find that extra money. I'm only mentioning it because I think it's important that we shouldn't be pretending to ourselves that we are meeting those figures and we shouldn't be, uh, we need to be open with the public that, that we are a long way short of meeting our own strategic target in roads and So that, they were my comments on recommendation number two. And I just had a, a brief question on recommendation seven, which was the building's asset management plan. So that plan sets out a figure for how much is needed each year for building maintenance. And I'm just wondering whether it is possible to put a figure on how much we are in fact spending on building maintenance so we can compare with how close we are to, to that recommended figure. I know that might be difficult because building maintenance is a whole lot of little bits. Is it possible to comment on how close we are to making that recommended thing? Yeah, through the chair, as you say, the going forward and our assets, um, juggling priorities and maintaining the conditions of all the asset categories is, is going to be a, you know, a big challenge and something we'll have to work to. Um, buildings is, is one that you'll see in our financial statement is, um, has not had a lot of um, investment compared to other asset carry categories and something we need to look at. Um, we generally will, you know, it is difficult, but generally we'll allocate around 100, 100K to ongoing improvements each year for building. And then like roads, uh, opportunities arise for capital improvements, other um, operational things that we can do along the way. And we will try to weave them together as where the opportunities arise. But um, we're very aware that, like other asset categories, um, you know, investments are required, and how we, we manage the budget will be something we eagerly watch going forward. So, have, have you or has, has anyone actually worked through the figures just to get an idea of how close we are to meeting the recommendation in the asset management building? Yeah, we do. So, so through the chair, um, if you're in the financial statements, we get an expenditure there, what we're putting into the, into the buildings, and that's where we look at where we're falling short and any improvements that need to be. But you don't have any figures available on top of your head? Not on top of your head, no. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? <coughs> I made the observation that the IPNR process is a, um, trying to make a real budget is what an ideal budget would be. And it, it, we have we have what we'd like for building maintenance, we have what we'd like to have for road maintenance, we have what we'd like for other activities, and there's never, yeah. never enough money. It's a matter of how we the staff divide it with recommendations to get the best fit we can for the circumstances. All right, I'll put uh, I'm one, two, three, six, and seven. Uh, all those in favour? Pass those items are passed unanimously. All right, we'll now go with item four. 
And that is resolved to collect up to $555,722 for the 2023 town improvement levy and adopt the allocation of projects based on option three provided. I have an alternative motion, if I uh, you, what what you yeah. have now is a is, is a replacement. It's is a well. No, no, nobody has moved that recommendation. Nobody's moved it, so okay. I, I would yeah. like to do something different. Yeah. Uh, so I've provided it to the executive assistant earlier. If it's possible to bring over. No, it's not the one. Okay. Thank you. So the, the, the main issues I would like to point out in, in why I've come up with a different list compared to any of the three options. Uh, that the first point was, uh, I'm sure no one's surprised, I don't believe it is reasonable to allocate any further funds towards the hub. The CI fund has already contributed 470000 and even the surplus above that figure, town residents contribute to that through general rates as well. So I just believe that enough is enough in, in slugging town residents for a facility which is intended to provide the service for everybody. So I, I, I do not support any further money on the TI fund. My second point is I do not support the TI fund being used for the bulky goods collection. In fact, uh, by my reading of the Local Government Act, I just don't believe it is legal under lo the Local Government Act, which says you cannot use special rates for waste services. I think that bulky goods collection should be funded from the waste collection charge, the same charges for the kind of collection of the 2048 bills. So I haven't included that in my list. Um, and the, the third point is just about written part. I have a question. When we, we got the original report on that, the estimate was $180,000. That was for some gaby and rock lining, which I think is, is grossly excessive for the of, of water courts. But in option three, it mentions this is like 80,000. So I'm guessing that that 80 as opposed to 180 is for, is for the option that we inspected. Would that be right? Um, through, through the map, yeah, it is actually an alternative uh, to uh, line that the channel or redick deep, re -deep the channel actually line with some, uh, some rocks over as, 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 as we discussed on the top. As we discussed with the council yeah. is yeah, just some minor rock yeah. and in a natural type sense. Yeah, so I am happy with the eighty thousand. I think the one eighty thousand is is uh, excessive and unnecessary. So that's our further main points in, in what I was looking at and coming up with with that motion. Um but I'm I'm open to any changes along the way uh, people want to uh, suggest alternatives or increase or decrease any of the uh, that's my motion on the screen. So you'll you'll move it. Do you have yeah. a second it? Council McCarthy. Can we speak to the council McCarthy? Okay. Yes, Mr. Mayor, um, just for now I think we're spending up on the hub. Uh, it's getting near completion. We might be able to get a um, final figure later on. We might have to vote more than 200,000. Find more money, but I think to get this operational plan next year, we need to spend some money on permanent projects in the community. I just think that um, we might take it on board in the comment, but now we had 3 million. We've already added another million. You know, and we might want a lot more yet. Yeah. Uh, let's do other projects in the community. Councillor McKibben. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd speak against the motion, uh, the uh, amended motion, sorry, the altered motion. Um, at the moment, we're borrowing for the hub, and I think it's in our interest to reduce those borrowing, noting um, we still have a substantial sewage treatment plant ahead of us. Um, and I personally believe that we should be looking at something closer to option two. Um, so I'm speaking against the amendment. And I would be uh, putting an amendment to state that that uh, four would read resolve to collect the 555,722 in 2023-24 town improvement levy, not the allocation of the project based on option two provided. So you'll move that. Can I do it? That's an amendment. No. Yeah, um, yeah, that's I need a second. Second for the amendment. Councillor Hayes, you want to speak to that? Um, you can say just you don't have to speak to it. Right. I just, I don't. I just don't support Councillor Tucker's. But that's right. right. We're, we're now dealing with with so like Councillor Kidman's proposal. Could you, could you just reiterate? So, so that is in option two. Option two, we, we, have, we have borrowed yep. money to yeah, complete yeah. the hub because, as you'll recall, it was originally forecast at three million, then went to a bit over four million. So, we have to borrow a million. I think, in the present economic climate, that we should seek to reduce our borrowings um, somewhat where we have the ability to because we have. At one of my concerns is we have a sewage treatment plant coming up, which we're still awaiting a detailed design on. And I am um, very worried that these STP may cost uh, more than we have budgeted and that we may have to look at borrowing there um, so that we, um, I think we should try and reduce our borrowings on the hub as much as possible. Now that I've listened correctly, mm -hmm. um, that's something that we all agreed with earlier on in the year as well, and yet we haven't thought that option of being. Do you not wish to speak to that? Councillor Chamber? Um, I agree with support, um, the amendment that Mr. Uh, Chippen has put forward. I agree we need to reduce our, our borrowings, and it's something that we should continue to do, especially as we've got the FTP coming, so I fully support that. Uh, I need to look at number two off and just what the differences are to three. Oh, sorry, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's basically that. Yeah. 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 Full allocation. Full allocation of um, the library is pretty, yeah, pretty that's brutal. But... <laughs> sorry. That's very personal. <laughs> we didn't we agree. Didn't <laughs> Last a previous a previous year, we allocated some money to bring to draw down against the the, the then one point three million, which reduced the, the loan to one point zero five million. Through the chair, we've executed an internal loan uh, on that, which we yet to hear back from LD, but that's the status of that. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> um, but I do agree with you. We really do need to reduce our volume considering the um, yeah. decline at the moment. And the ST. And the ST. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think we could have a town improvement plan that only supports one project. I think option three is partway between option <laughs> two and council <laughs> Tucker. I, I think that's partly controversial, mm -hmm. and I don't think we should survive. <laughs> Look, I, I, um, I'll speak against the amendment for the same reason. I think I think that that is far too radical. I I think the original step and drop in three was about right, mm -hmm. uh, and that in fact will save close to forty five thousand dollars in interest payments uh, to the part of uh, the uh, Alone. Um, but we'll put, is there anyone else want to speak to this before? 
expect this will be amended. That's more that we have to yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, first of all, I'd query is that really an amendment or is it a foreshadowed motion? No, um, no, it's an amendment. Because it's just so different from what I put up that I would have thought. Well, it, it's, all, it's all about the same thing. Um, but yes, uh, just speaking against the amendment, that would mean that there would be no money at all, for example, for the common or for the other items listed, either in option three or in my motion. Um, um, if, if, if goes even further in what I see as simply taking advantage of it. I can understand people out of town uh, being happy with that because uh, they're getting a facility and putting very little into it. But uh, I just think it is uh, extremely unfair that, that town ratepayers, especially with option two, but even with option four. Uh, anyone else to speak to this, this amendment? Right reply. If anyone else, no, I'm speak. happy with that. Right, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is a very brutal um, option. I'm I'm the first to agree. However, it worries me, as I've said previously, what this sewage treatment plant is going to cost us. And we know we're not going to get the detailed design mm -hmm. now till September. We then have to go out for a quest tender um, and get tenders back uh, for a construction cost that we have a at best a guesstimate at the moment. However, if we look at option three, mm. the common has had considerable amounts of money spent on it over the last. Uh, Councilman Kitman, let's speak. I am write a reply for your. And, and, and this is this is the reasoning. Sorry. So, why I'm pushing option two is if you look at. The say, for instance, the common has had a considerable amount of money spent over over the last term and a half of this council, um, and I think that it's justifiable to hold fire at the moment and to put that money into reducing our debt on the half. half. Similarly, um, we have two projects involving parks, which I think could be put on hold for another year. Again, trying to reduce our debt on the half. Um, the bulky goods collection, as has been indicated, I think, by um, Councillor Tucker, it could be collected in another way. So I think there are alternatives. I, I am the first to admit that option two is brutal, but I think we have to be brutal in the current economic climate. All right, I'll put the amendment. The amendment is uh, to go for option two. All those in favour? Against the, the amendment is lost. We now revert to the uh, recommendation. Now, uh, who's spoken on that so far? One, two. All right. Uh, Councillor Tucker. I'm going to speak against the. Um, ultimate motion. Um, wait for it to come back up. Um, I have no idea what uh, Rockwall's $50,000 is. I have never heard of a Ross Street, Queen Street intersection improvements for $30,000. And you don't leave money unallocated like uh, for $22,000. Um, I think it is important that um, the bulky goods is something that comes into effect. And I, and I recognise that the Local Government Act allows the, um, the, the money raised from town improvement levy. It has, gives very broad powers for the council on what it, what it spends. And it refers to any service, good, uh, or enabling goods and services to be used for the town improvement fund. So I'm against the uh, item, the, um, the ultimate recommendation. Um, and, right. 
Anything else we should speak to the this one? Yeah, so I, I wish to speak against this motion. I don't um, support this motion at all. Yeah. Yes, I wish to speak to the amendment. If we go back to the original as worded um, motion in the papers that um, resolved to collect 555,722 of the 2023 24 town improvement levy and not the allocation of projects based on option three provided. I'm second to place. Speaker. I'm happy with uh, that. Um, it was fairly brutal. And I think it has a nice mix. Um, and um, I think it does keep uh, a good percentage of our community happy that there is a good mix of the money being spent across the different areas. The other one just was partially brutal. And um, I'm happy that you put that up. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll speak to it or against it. Um, yes, I support that motion. Um, thank you, Council Matthew, for um, putting my head earlier. That's all good. Um, and, um, yeah, I support I support this motion and I do think that it is important that people understand that the allocation that is going to the Open Library and Community Centre does benefit all, but it, it benefits more people within the town boundary than it would out of town because they can walk there. Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would not surprisingly, I would like to speak against it. Um for the the reasons I've already outlined, but I'll also just take the opportunity to explain what was meant in, in my original motion of, of rock walls. There are a number of streets around town where we have small rock retaining walls where there are high banks behind the curb, but there are still a number of other locations where that is missing and, and those banks simply don't get maintained and they're not messy. So that was what I had in mind to get back to a program to try to complete those uh, small retaining walls. And the Ross Street, Queen Street intersection is something that comes from the uh, traffic committee meeting in the same way that last year we allocated some money for the Dar and Dudley Street intersection to improve traffic safety. We're, we're looking at exactly the same sort of thing at Ross and Queen Street. So, so that's what that was. And I could have explained that previously, so um, I apologize for not having done it. Anyone else coming in? Yes, um, I just need an explanation from the engineer if I can. Um, the engineer provided us with uh, over a three year plan for Curtin Garden. Is it fully funded for those three projects over the three years? One of them is the third option was up in Herborn Street, I thought. It wasn't in this report, it was something that was presented to council in the past. Uh, the, from my recollection uh, through the mayor, the next street, I think it was even like the third street yeah. uh, between, uh, between Dark and Tasman. Yes, yeah, so that's they like, funded separate to this TI fund? Uh, no, so if we would come from this uh, particular TI yeah. fund, of course, to be part of our council. So we need some progress in the report with that, okay? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's been time back. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Um, I'm not totally convinced on either option, three or the amendment or the alternative one in number four or the amendment in option three. Um, what does concern me is that uh, option three. There's nothing in there for curb and guttering or footpaths. And um, we already know that we have significant water problems in the area that the director just spoke about, and also a couple of other areas that we've looked at with the director in Earl Street over between the Main Street and uh, LB Avenue. Curtis, is it? Can I go the other way uh, up on that corner? Queen and Queen and Queen and Queen and Queen and Queen and the one in Herbal Street. I know we can't put them all on there, but uh, we left it with the director to prioritize. And 
it concerns me as well that there's no allowance in either option, or the, I think there is an option in option four. There is an option for some money to be spent on footpaths. Um, we've got several footpaths in the main street area in or sections of footpath in the main street area that need repair, uneven and breaking surfaces and things like that. Um, we've got several sections, one street off the main thoroughfare in Queen Street, further uh, Scotia Avenue, um, uh, Green Street and places like that that have got no footpaths on either side of the road. Um, so it just concerns me that we, we don't have an allowance in option three for anything to do with footpaths. I, I would suggest that we move the bulky goods collection. I know you can't do much footpaths for 20,000, but bulky goods collection can go under the waste fund and we could put that plus a portion of the money that's going to the hub for the footpaths. I know that's, a, that's I'm not about proposing as a member of the reason, yeah, no, I'm just trying I'm to think. I'm commenting just, on I'm just trying to think through where this whole process goes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how, how I pitch, but I'm, oh. I'm not happy with either one really as they are. That's fine. That's yeah. That's fine. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I think everybody All right. is, is there anyone else who wants to speak for or against? We already have the 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 proposed uh, members from the council here. We've already spoken. I guess for now. Okay, but I'll just say that anyone, anyone else speaking for or again? Oh, I've got a question. Okay. okay, I just had a question in option three regarding the Glindwee Park remove and upgrade. Um, that seems to be just hanging around for a long time. Would there, would that be able to be removed and placed into that? Um, the footpath curve and doubling under that 115,000. Well, let's that was just that's the, possible, I guess. Yeah. But we've got to we've, we've got to actually vote on the, the proposed amendment. Uh, my question was very similar. I'm not clear what that clean that park remove and upgrade means. What is that? What is that proposed? I think that's when your park is, is currently. Uh, um, park the park with playground equipment on it, yes, that's and right. that's the one that's the earmarked for some residential. Yeah, yeah, so what's the hundred and fifteen thousand dollars? Yeah, through the mayor's office. The, the, the park at the bottom of Lindewee was the earmarked locality. Yeah. There is two pocket parks in Lindewee, certainly one was called Please. Yeah, one we've been looked at by council for the development of units. And this particular allocation would be just to facilitate the commencement of upgrading or continuing to upgrade a pocket park in terms of play equipment, softball, and compliant matters. So that's for the one down the bottom of Glenmore Avenue. Correct. Okay, so nothing to do with that developing for residential. No, that wasn't the intent because I think that's still under campus consideration. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to put the amendment. All those in favour? And it's to option three, as originally stated. As originally stated. Yeah. Basically, the original recommendation. All those in favour of the amendment? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Against? Council Sucker, Council Chicken, and Claims Council Carlton. So the amendment has become the motion. Now, I think at this stage, are we happy with the, the motion as it, as, it, as it stands, which is the, all of the options that are there? Yeah. All right. Well, you no, just voted it on it. You vote? It's just voted on it. No, we, no we, voted, we voted on on the amendment, which mm -hmm. took us back to the original motion. Okay. Yeah. And I haven't called a vote on the motion yet. Okay. We can now... You can now put another amendment to what we we how we how we adjust those figures. <laughs> now, Councillor McKibben has got his, his motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I think I've spoken to this, but I do have a couple of questions, if I could, to just clarify with 
greater certainty for I think all of us, all of the councillors, um, just some more details. The 100,000 on the common, and I know we have a common master plan, uh, what works is that going to be allocated to um, in 2023-24, if I could? Um, if you tripped in terms of the there is uh, no finite uh, detail around that yet. It's definitely been a, uh, an allocation to be decided on, and there was a, uh, a working party uh, as part of that master plan mm -hmm. for that decision making practice. And in re relation to Glen, Glen Weir Park, um, is there a plan as to what works have to be done for that project, 115,000? Again, a, a park that is certainly been identified as a need to upgrade some uh, uh, equipment, certainly that is uh, non compliant. Uh, and again, it was really a, facil a facilitate of upgrading uh, off parks as a, as a, as a program plan to, to do that uh, around that. So, you don't have any idea whether 115,000 is too much, too little, um, whether you're spending it. Uh, again, I can believe that equipment is not cheap in terms of playground equipment, uh, nor softball. So whether it's a combination of, uh, you know, bark chip softball and or uh, revolvenized rubber uh, and alike. So uh, look, again, it wouldn't take too much to spend $150,000. What's the usage of that part? I know there's a subdivision close to it, isn't it? Look, look, certainly there is very much residential populated area. I, I couldn't comment on because of how much use it does get, but uh, certainly it is there. And uh, if the council doesn't uh, want to upgrade it, then that may be the case. It's true, yeah, if I could. Um, with your technical expertise and enough knowledge, um, is there anything absolutely necessary to be done on the common in 23-24? No, I think we have spent quite a bit of money on it over the last term and a half or term, and probably it was extended term. Uh, pretty sure I couldn't comment that there is one recent matter that has come to hand with the, uh, the rotunda, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly the degradation of the actual timber work and some vandalism that has occurred. So may be certainly a set of piece of consideration for council in terms of investing money for repairs and or replacement. Estimate. Uh, look, I, I don't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put a figure on it. I, I'm not quite sure what that would it may it'd be in the probably hundred thousand or up to a hundred thousand dollars yeah, And just so the chair the generally when we allocate to the TI to the common that's it sits there and there, that's done by the common working party and the, the project plan and things going forward. So that we need to that one out but that's where have an allocation going to filter down to that working party. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question because we've had some suggestions that money may need to be diverted elsewhere. So I'm just trying to get the, the two big lump sums there are the ones I'm trying to channel down. I'm not making a, a judgment one way or the other, but someone might want to put an amendment. I don't know. You wouldn't think repairs and maintenance would come out of town improvement. Repairs and maintenance to a uh, infrastructure. That, that should come out of something else. Pretty chair, again, it is in such a state that I think that there's a lot more uh, that it needs to be looked at. I think mm. there are maybe oh, yeah. dry rot and the like in, in amongst the timber work. I'd like to put a Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move an amendment to action three, which would be to remove the Bulky Kids collection and the Glinda Park, remove and upgrade, and replace them with 90,000 for curb and gutter and 45,000 for footpaths. Uh, I think it's more important that we progress with the, the long term plan for the common. I'd like to leave that money in there. Uh, and uh, leave clean the park for, for perhaps the following year. I'll second that. Seen by Councilman Kepney. You are spoken to it? All right. You yes. to it? Oh, just briefly, Mr. Mayor, I, I too think the common is a brilliant amenity and um, it's certainly. Use um, quite a lot, and by everybody, it's a, it's a talking point for visitors. I, I would like to see uh, a stop off there. Uh, the, the park, I think, in the Winter Avenue, 
and it is fair enough to defer and go the next um, uh, next point, please. And um, yeah. the bulky goods take those two out and split them between Kevin Garing and Councillor McCar uh, Councillor Tucker suggested. I think is probably a fairly reasonable solution. Thanks. Anyone else wish to speak to this member? Councillor Graham? I agree with those changes. I think the, the Glenda Park could be put off for next year. I've never actually had any child in there. And I go past it a lot. Councillor Hayden? Yeah, I'm speaking against that motion. I would like to put forward a foreshadowed amendment for that. My foreshadowed amendment would be that um, the bulky goods stay, the community hub stay, the Glendwee Park remove and upgrade, be removed, and then curb and gutter and footpath get allocated 80,000, and the park itself gets allocated 35, and everything else stays as is. Which part? The, the Park. So in that, in that, the change would be that everything stays the same. The hundred and fifteen thousand allocation to Glendale Park remove and upgrade. It would then be allocated thirty five thousand and an extra line for curb gutter footpath for eighty. I don't have the amendment. Um, at this point, and I'm going to call that over amendment. Do you want me to repeat my? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my amendment was to, from option three, to remove the bulky goods option and remove the Glenda Park, remove and upgrade. And Allocate ninety thousand for urban gutter and forty five thousand for footpaths. Sorry, no, this is for now. I didn't realize that you were fighting the <laughs> amendment. Out of the amendment, the amendment, the amendment the proposal to the amendment. Almost the record, Councillor. <laughs> you want to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Is that, is that your motion, Councillor? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, the common should say a hundred hundred thousand. Uh, and uh, I think there's still a bit of oh, well, that still leaves a small amount unallocated, but that would be the same as as what's in there. Option three, anyway. Good man, that that option is unallocated and just over seven thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we will switch to speak for or against this amendment. Oh, a question of clarification, if I could Um. The removal of bulky goods collection amount of 20,000, what implications does that have, Council? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I think that's probably technical purposes, directly. Yeah. All the acting general. Yeah, members. I mean, through the mayor, the, the two outcomes, the community expectation that sort of said to you, what would be the communication, the uh, managing that level? Should that seems to continue, we would need to find. Um, that would need to be funded from somewhere, and most likely have to come from the the, the waste fund, waste fund, or somewhere else. So um, we would need to look how we continue that service and where that will come from. If I could make a comment again, um, I would be loath to remove the twenty thousand on the basis that. I think we're going to need as much money as we can in the waste fund mm -hmm. for this future STP. So I would 
um, speak against the motion to that extent, um, and I would be more inclined to support the foreshadowed amendment offered up by Councillor Hayden. Thank you, Councillor Hayden. Thank you, there is 7,000 allocated. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would speak against it as well in the same vein that um, Captain Kidden. I wouldn't like to see the bulk of the taken out. I'm more inclined to support the better mix that the full shadowed motion has put forward. And we could we all look back as well. Option one actually had 50,000 allocated to. Um, a comment. So, you know, there is a, there's some options there to play around with some numbers and get a, a nice mix across it. But I think um, the shadow of motion covers it better and still allows us to cover all the curb and gutter and the footpath, the bulky pool, the park. So, there's a lot of the communities in uh, benefit, benefiting from the PI part. So, that's my speaking against that. I mean, I think the bulky goods um, fund of 20,000 can come from the tip fund, where sometimes you get a benefit of a scrap steel and all that that you pick up on them bulky goods days. Um, Council have made it very hard now to pick this up. Some of it's just rubbish, some of it's um, scrap metal. And, and we're now made it expensive because we require three different trucks to do the damn thing. But we do get a benefit as well. But it, it's only a small amount of under the 20,000, and I think it can come out of the tip fund just as we funded the living trees down the thing. We're not broke out there. We're getting a massive stream of um, um, waste at the tip. Yeah. And we need to curb the waste that we get in the outside our area, but at the moment it's a bonus. You bring that up to so at the moment, this is the current amendment. So is well, I did more than one, two, three, six, and seven. You will have the um, motion that was one, which was option two. Yeah. Um, there. Option three. three. Sorry, option three. three. So, so you need to determine which is the motion before any further. So this is this is the amendment. So your original to your last motion, motion. or amendment, no, or amended motion because yeah. it was an amended motion. So we need to deal with amendments yeah. first. Yeah. That's right. Um. So. The issue appears to be that we we have a, a significant desire to keep the bulky goods going. Um, there is an unallocated level of the seven thousand dollars there. Um, and we can so if we could find another ten thousand dollars or thereabouts. Okay. Well, we can just use we can we can allocate that seven thousand to to um yeah. oh, goods in the waste fund do the rest. Yeah, yeah I don't yes, I don't I wouldn't like to see the bulky goods disappear. I just like to see it funded somewhere else so that we can manage to get um, some curb and guttering and some no, I would like I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we've got, we've got that unallocated un 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 figure. We can we could perhaps allocate that and then the waste fund and pick up the other yeah. 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 We probably get that with you know extra yeah. unbudgeted so income there. If 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 the mover and the second of this amendment are agreeable, can we change that unallocated to um public goods? Subject to a question for the acting general manager, if I may. By all means. Um, my question is Does the acting general manager believe it is within the local government act to fund the bulky goods collection from a special rate? I know the, the act gives 
a broad uh, you know, options available to council, as you said earlier, Mr. May. But um, my reading is that uh, one of the things you cannot do is use the special rate for domestic waste collection, and that's what I think I'll be doing this question is. And so I'm just asking for an opinion. Yeah, for the, for the chair, the, the work that we've done in the, the TI review going forward and what has been done in the past, where um, what council is allocating that fund for those services, um, we, in our opinion, is correct. And, the, um, and that will be what we're continuing to do going forward. Um, that process has been reviewed uh, independently and externally. So my opinion would be that that can remain. Um, my other comment would be that should you remove this from, from the TI allocation, if the waste fund was to collect you and council won't wish to proceed with the bulk of this collection, then that would then have to be a much wider service to all those that are paying waste. So that might be yes, different. That, so that, I, I, I wasn't that trying point. to get rid of the collection just to save the funding, but uh, yeah. based on that advice, I'm willing to accept that, that change. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, can I sorry, can I, I, sorry, I, I something the acting general secretary, can you just clarify that, please? If it's allocate, if this is allocated to the the waste fund, mm -hmm. it we'd have to be offering a more general service, and that's going to cost us more because we have to offer it to more people. That's what we're saying. So it's going to cost us, could cost us 30 or 40,000 rather than 20,000. Why would we have to offer more people? Well, uh, through the chair, the, if, if the waste fund is, is now paying for this service, then council wants to offer it, then you may have to look at those who are paying waste. Um, would then they possibly be entitled to this service? So the TI area and the waste area are different, are they? Those that pay the waste levy are different, you know, for. Yeah. Oh, well, the waste levies for all, all all people in the shire. That's right. So those that would pay waste, I would, up the top, I would assume that they would expect to be in on this service if that. So that would be all rural customers. You could all start potentially should the council want to do that. No, way. I don't pay waste levy. No, well, I think it's part of your rate though for the the tip. Not, not no, 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 no. no. It's, it's only the TI collection. Same. Yeah. There's a couple of. Sorry? I believe there's a couple of pockets that um, are applicable for that rate that are not in the TI. Right. So, so are they close right down? down? Yeah. So once that the, the, the Avon, yeah. uh, yeah. and Avon. in the town, not included in the town, mm -hmm. the town privately. Yeah. But they, but they do uh, receive the waste yeah. weekly, yeah. weekly curbside collection. Yeah. And if the TI area was increased to five kilometres out, then they'd probably be brought in anyway. Um, okay, so it's not a huge number, it might be what a couple of hundred. Yeah, it's just not a huge, huge number, but it's something to consider that may need to get broader than the traditional way. The cost might be 25,000 or 20,000. Not we're not talking about doubling or anything. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think it's doubling, but it would be a cost increase, potential <laughs> cost. So that means we would have 7,000 from this and we still might have to have 20,000 from the waste I, I'm sorry, it was just a question I'm trying to clarify in my own mind and everyone's mind, I think, what, what this, the implications are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other option to the G have is to look at some slight reduction to the community hub uh, allocation that's currently sitting in airport yeah, public. Um, or to the common. The common take it down to the total. And take it off the common. Mm. Why don't we take 17,000 off the common? We don't have 15. We're really going to take 30, because we've got 30. Oh, so mm -hmm. Option one only had 20,000 or 50,000 50, in the common anyway. Yeah. So you could take 13,000 off the off the 100 yeah. and use the seven. Yeah. If you want yeah. to move it in there. We're going to take it back. I think it's me, isn't it? No, it's me. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Council Tucker and Council McKenna. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm 
I've lost the plot. I'm, 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 could we have a bit of room to <laughs> what we've actually done? All right. This, this is quite. <laughs> this is now proof. Common is bound to 87000 The bulk of goods collection is bound to $20,212. And I guess that just makes, yep. makes mm -hmm. nothing unallocated. I can make it twenty thousand and then two hundred and twelve dollars unallocated every time. Yeah, yeah. Do that yeah. Well, I don't... Then put that on admin. Right. 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 You can stay there. Yeah. It makes it <laughs> now the movement and second of yeah, comfortable with what's there now. Uh -huh. well, subject to all of my previous yeah. comments. So we're yes. aware of that. Yeah. So, okay. That's in the past. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do we have eighty thousand? Zoe, you have a point. You wanted to make a comment on this. Sorry, uh, through, through the chair, um, there is a, a little bit of bulky goods remaining from this year that could be used to fill the, the delta, but you guys have just come up with something else, so I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so again, mover and second are happy. Do we need to check the phone out up to the right? I'm, I'm doing that now as you speak. <laughs> <laughs> A rip arithmetic brain would have it. Thank you. Five uh, five hundred and fifty-five thousand seven hundred and twenty-two on the dot. <laughs> okay. I'm so gonna put the amendment. All right. Uh I'll put Good. the amendment. Good. All those in favor. Yeah, all right, I'm keeping it. Like unanimous. <laughs> <God. laughs> <That's unanimous. laughs> <laughs> in favor. Well done, <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Patel. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Some yeah. very good work there, Councillor. Well done. So that's number four. Number five, <clears throat> and that is Council and North Local Road Scenario 2, Bitchman yeah. Resealing Local Rural Council Roads for inclusion in the operational plan. Councillor Tucker, Councillor McKibber. Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, again, I'm sure no one's surprised that uh, I support that because it gets some more money into Redfield, which we are a long, long way behind. Uh, and I note that uh, the, the changes that were recently made, the road budget matrix, in the first matrix, we had 384, 500 going to Redfield, and that's now up to 584. So that's a good outcome. Get the, uh, another perhaps three or four kilometres that recently was done. Uh, again, similar to the comment I made earlier, we still need to be aware that it, it's a long, long way short of the figures that were recommended by the Director of Technical Services back when we had the, the roads workshop. The figures there uh, per year were 1.46 million to maintain a proper resale program. And we're on 584, so a bit over a third of, of what's needed. So we just need to maintain our consciousness that we are a long way short and we need to look for every opportunity we can find to, to try to boost that reason. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, look, um, I think the general feeling among councillors, and when we also put it to our uh, community meetings um, when we when it was explained was well, there was a general view that um, they do not want to see our bitumen road degrading anymore and uh, that we seal them rather than ending up costing us a lot more money um, and the general view appeared to be and I, I note in the Black Springs community meeting I think um, um, former councillor Cable spoke strongly on this um, uh, that we we should proceed on with the resales and I'm happy that we're doing that because I, I um, as uh, Council Tucker's 
have said we really need to ensure that our roads that we have sealed remain well sealed and don't degrade anymore. So I'm more than happy to second it. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to this? Councillor McCarthy. It's Mr. Mayor, um, I thought we were advised that um, more funding had come available and scenario one was also achievable because since this was reported, I thought there was more funding come available and, and number one can still be achieved. Back to gentlemen. Yeah, through the chair, that's correct, Council. There is a, um, a green allocation that we know we are getting. We just wait for guidelines to be released in early July. Um, a portion of that definitely is for roads, it's about 330k, and there's another 584 there for infrastructure. So we are intending to um, present that to council the next quarterly budget review once the guidelines and that's confirmed through a data buffer. So, but that is potentially an option that these can be revisited for consideration of optimal with that funding as well. Okay, so long as we can come back and consider it, I'm mm -hmm. happy with that. I just think we're going to move forward. Yep. Anyone else? I'll put the motion. All those in favor? All hands in favor. Thank you. Delegations to procedural amendments. The recommendation endorse the proposed procedural enhancement which authorises the general manager to approve purchasing and payments above delegation and delivery of works and services when directed by a council resolution. Page number, please. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Councillor McKibben. Second note, Councillor Hayden. Councillor McKibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Fair. This was obviously considered by Eric and Let's say there were some amendments I suggested that have been taken up. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it removes the previous process where the mayor was signing off on things that were really um, was not aware of, I, I would imagine, mm -hmm. in some cases. So I think by centralizing this on the new system mm -hmm. and with the CFO checking things to make sure that they're in compliance with a council resolution and the process that's suggested at the bottom of 559, together with the delegation authority uh, listed on 558, 468, um, is absolutely appropriate. So I'm, I'm very happy to propose this recommendation. Thank you. That's a hope. We have to do something that would be able to do. Now we speak for or against. I'll put the motion all in favor. Unanimous leader. Reports for information, 14.1. I'm the acting report of the general manager. Recommendations that book item 14.1 is received as information. Councillor Hayden, Councillor, 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 Councillor Hayden. Yeah, I'm very happy to make the recommendation to accept the request of being very hectic now. And as a way to note, a lot of work that's going on in the last few years. I have nothing to say about that. I have a comment or a question. No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Pass unanimously. Item 14 2, Monthly Activity Report, Planning Development. The recommendations that item 14 2 are received. Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden. Councillor McKibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm more than happy to move this recommendation. And I note that a lot of the um, historic application. Um, applications in process have been uh, completed and I commend the um, the director on that. Thank you. And um, the only comment I was made is maybe the table that is halfway down 478, we maybe should, um, not its is it applications lodged or May 2022 or applications in progress May 2023? Maybe going for lodge to in progress because they're actually showing the progress not mm -hmm. that they're lodged in May 23. Um, but apart from that, I'm um, more than happy and um, as I said, thank the um, director for moving on those historic applications which seem to have been um, in the process for some time. Yeah, happy to second the report. And I was just wanting to ask 
um, planning director the question regarding the off lease dog park. I gather that the um, the quote has come back and it states that fencing is going to be commencing in July. How long do you think that will take for that to be erected? Um, through the chair, I didn't anticipate within a couple of weeks. Okay. Is the inspecting on that by all bricks that will be? And regarding the reef primitive camping area, now that we had everything go through the work committee, that's got to get segregated, it's recommended in July. How long do you think that work may take for that to be? Going through the chair, anticipating that we should have a, a new um, uh, shared company to provide the, the, the shed within the next 10 days. Um, the remainder of the other contractors are still active, ready to go, waiting on the uh, the shutdown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I noted at the Alka conference that everyone I spoke to about planning issues or heard from gossip, they all had severe trouble getting getting the backlog cleared. It's um, it's statewide. So hold up. Uh, anyone else? Put the motion all in favour. Motion is passed. Item 14.3 must be actually report for technical services and make recommendations for item 14.3 to receive this information. Thanks, Councillor Hayden. Councillor Fremba. Councillor Hayden. Um, yes, I'm happy to move the recommendation to accept the report. And mm -hmm. I, I do have to say, it's actually looking like the picture book. It's yes, it's very nice. Very it's, right. it's, it's getting smart in role, isn't it? Thank you, Mr. Technical Services Director. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Second, and um, I did the other photos that are appearing in this report on a regular basis. They're starting to get quite artistic. Um, but it's also good to note that um, the the team is actually working right across the community. There's Project Boomtown, there's Project Out of Town. So, you know, we're keeping on top of all the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, um, the Legends Rock Wall. Um, I think it's going to be anticipated that it's finished in Stone Mason by the end of the month. We got the park pretty good. Park uh, pretty good. That through the uh, mayor. Sorry, yes, the work is intended to be finished by the next two weeks. By the end of the uh, the parks are currently in progress and anticipated. I think uh, be coming in four weeks. I uh, think it's getting more like six weeks. Okay. Um, Refer to a common working party before where the general manager advised they've been ordered. That was a, that was a delay. Anyway, look, thank you. No, they've certainly been ordered. Uh, I can confirm. That. Yeah, no, this was at that common working party meeting. Well, it was confirmed that they hadn't been. But uh, anyway, no. moving forward. Anyone else? Motion all over favor. Motion is passed. Uh, month Act 14.4, Month Act Committee Report to Corporate Services. Recommendations that item 14.4 is received as information. Councillor Hayden, Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden. Yes, I'm happy to move the recommendation to um, endorse the report. There's been um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff happening with the document migration and open office, but um, it's really good to see that the end of the year spectacular is going to kick off again. Um, I did want to question the NADOC week date in here with um, our corporate services director, acting general manager, if I may, um, due to the fact that the Aboriginal working group seems to have this particular day on the 14th of October that they want to hold stuff. And I have some concerns that NADOC week is the first Sunday in July, but the second Sunday in July. And I am hoping that we've got a push to actually have something happening during that period of time. Yeah, through the chair, the the note of week planning, I know they are looking potentially to hold some events later in the year, uh, warm weather, 
those types of things. But it is, it is our intention to do also um, hold things to them that week as well. Uh, but I know some of the planning is doing things for them in the year, so I'm um, aware of that and we look to be pushing for some stuff during that week as well. Okay, that's great because it is for the elders. Um, it's not a, 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 the theme isn't family or the theme isn't children. The theme is for our elders. So I'm hoping that we can get that kicked off and we get some help and support doing that. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, well, I just had one question in relation to independent living units. When it says one lease notice is received, that means someone's terminating their lease, doesn't it? Yeah, that's correct. And, and uh, an EOI EO, was released. So that's the only <coughs> independent living unit not leased at the moment, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's, it's leased since we've written this report. People are moved, have moved in. So that we're all full. That's yeah. right. Correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm more than happy to second this recommendation. Francis Primbach. Um, I would just like to follow up on um, Councillor Hayden with the Maybox Suite. And I too believe that it really, the event could be in a period of time. Uh, and I know that we applied for grant funding and we were very successful from Art Exhibition. And, and I too am a bit curious as to our family day when I know that the theme is elders. We've got a new hub opening next Monday. Um, it would be an ideal location to have something for made up week if we don't have anything already sort of in that period. So I would like to see sort of a bit more focus in made up week. And I don't understand the normal weather. Um timing's timing. That's the period that's been allocated and that's what we should be using. We've got an end of year spectacular at the end of the year for other events. Um my one thing I'd like to see focus on. Anyone else? It's just a clarification on uh, item number two on um, 557 or page three. So it's successful with the shared pathway down O'Connell in the wards of Fish River Bridge. Is that correct? I appreciate that, correct. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we going all the way to the bridge now or are we pulling it up short at Castle Park due to the bridge not going ahead? Uh -huh. the bridge. Yeah, for the year. So it's we've not got the grants report yet. Hey? We're not to the grants report yet. Uh, oh, okay. We're doing this first. I got this. 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 I got Investments, item 14.5. Recommendations that item 14.5 is received with information. Councillor McKibben. Councillor McKibben. Councillor McKibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've read the um, report with interest and um, a couple of questions. The first is in relation to the comment which is under, which is sort of on page 498, uh, just above halfway down. I was getting a little little, um, and so understand that troubles the understanding. It was received on matured investments, which I assume are the matured investments at the top of page 500 from NAB and AMP Bank. Um, together with biannual interest received for the period of 31st of May 23. So, the period from when to 31st of May and the biannual interest on matured investments or on all investments. I'm assuming that's not on annual active investments. I was uncertain. Yeah. So do you want to take this one? You're mm -hmm. muted. Sorry, um, through, through the chair, um, the biannual interest is an accrual of the interest that we are earning on active interests as well. Um, so it's not just what we have received. So it's on active investments as well as the maturing investments. Yeah. So the next statement it is year to date interest received at 187,766. Mm -hmm. Now, assuming that that's also includes the council business saver, which is down below 106.343, plus 
monthly interest on active investments the 31st of May, 65,607. So that is in one in that month we earned from the 1st of May to the 31st of May, we earned 65,607 on our active investments listed on 499. Is that right? Um, not for the month, no. So the biannual one is picking up the interest. So uh, uh, the, a lot of the interest comes um, through sporadically with the investment um, portfolio that we hold. So some of them pay annually, uh, twice yearly on a yearly investment. Um, so when we're looking at the investments, um, the figure of the 187766 is what we've actually received. Um, but what we have um, anticipated to receive um, is the 47, if that makes sense. No. <laughs> okay. So the biannual interest received have, for the. We have several figures. We have 47,942. Yes. Correct. We have 187. Yes. Seven six six. We have sixty five six oh seven, and then down the bottom we have one oh six three four three. On this, I take it that's on the business saver account. So that's a separate account altogether. Yes. It's additional, right? So in the hundred and eighty seven seven six six, does Correct. it include the forty seven nine four two and the six five six oh seven? Correct. It does. Yes. Okay, so if you add those two up, mm -hmm. you get to about 110. Where does the remainder come from? Um, they're from interest received for the biannual before. Right, so for the last, the six-month period before. Yes. Right, so that would have been um, up to the 31st December or something similar. Yes. Right. I'm just wondering if there's a little better way of presenting this so it's clearer. Well, I think that's that, if there is a better way. I think that's probably best to start. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. De so definitely. Anyone completely confused with this? <laughs> May well be. Um, the other thing, as general manager, is my comment about the um, um, cash available for operations. Um, I think for appearance purposes, it would be. Nice, so that the 30th of June we are actually positive. Yeah, uh, uh, to the chair, so we provided some commentary to Council yes, on did. this. Um, yeah. we, we have a significant focus on the impacts that grants are having, particularly on cash flow. We, uh, the team, we are putting the restrictions in on a monthly basis, they appear in the quarterly budget review and the financials. We're eagerly uh, watching that space because they do impact the ability to do these bigger projects. Um, these these reports are, are written at a point in time, and and as I indicated, that uh, we are due, like the end of last financial year, a number of grants that uh, are due to be paid to us upon milestones reports being submitted. Um, the report that I provided, there's a number there for the for the library table and way. Um, we are very keen to obviously. Monitor figure, but that's why we are reporting it each month to indicate the focus and the and the grants portfolio to be putting these reports and getting them um, paid as soon as possible. They do impact our yeah. They do significantly. That's but right. um, uh, not good for a council to have a, a negative figure there. No, through, through the chair, so uh, when we do the annual financial statements, we cannot report report them as a negative. Um, we do have to reduce our internal restrictions as the temporary holding of that loan. Um, and when those workings are done, should they require to, we'll provide that information to council. Um, that's sort of what I was suggesting, but I didn't want to say that. <laughs> yeah, I think I would have thought that's the way to do it, and. Uh, because I would have hated a set of financials to go a negative operation, uh, uh, negative um, cash operation uh, for cash uh, operation. No, I'm going to put the motion. Yeah. I'm putting the motion. I should do it. Do I yeah, you, 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 oh, you're sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Captain. It's fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> let's, let's, you're getting into the, back into the books rather than in investments here, Captain. So well, I think it does concern us. 
It does, but it is not the motion that's before. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick comment. Um, it's pleasing to note that 25% of our total investments are maturing in the coming quarter, and the majority of those are down in the, are currently earning interest at the lower rates of between 1.15 and 1.9%. Uh, it's it's uh, just 12 investments there that are maturing shortly around the $6 million mark. So with current interest rates at 4.1 and two forecasts coming, rises coming up, that would be a positive windfall for them, do you think? Yeah. We would get a uh, significant increase in their interest. Certainly better than what a year ago. Yeah, we're halfway where it could be. Fair for everyone. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Yes. I'll put the motion. All in favour? Motion is passed. Grants updates. Item 14.6. Recommendations reported by the item 14.6. Receive this information and note the new section in the report for applicable and milestone payments. We have a seconder, Councillor Hayden, Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden. Yes, I'm happy to make the recommendation and I note the new section. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to um, second this. Um, 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 I note that we have the, we were successful with the Get New South Wales Active Program. Um, I'm just wondering if we can put pressure on the state government to build a bridge over the uh, <laughs> over the river, because otherwise we're going to have a pathway to nowhere. Something like that, isn't it? Um, and I just, I just want to make sure that we do consult with landholders around there, because when I uh, addressed it previously, they were unaware that there was a pathway going along. So, okay. um, and I'm happy that we've got the NAIDOC grant, obviously the Heritage Advisor Services grant, um, that was raised by Council McCarthy before and, and uh, answered by um, the Acting General Manager of 25,000 was great. And the local roads and community infrastructure of 921.674, as the Acting General Manager alluded to previously in this meeting, I think it's great. We can certainly do with some more money for our capital expenditure and for roads. Um, I know still we've got a number of the grant applications that have been outstanding for some time. The betterment funds, obviously, and um, regional drought resilience, et cetera. So I think the, high, the period the government has put on holding these to make a determination expires in is it September or yeah. earlier? About halfway through. Um, right, so September, was it six months? Yeah. So we keep our fingers crossed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm all happy to move this record now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of questions. The first one is on page 502, item D, the Heritage Advisor Services. It says the funding for 2023 to 25 grand is 25,000 and matched funding is required. But do, do we have the, our matching funding in, in our 23 24 budget, or will we have to? Allow for it in the following years. Um, no, to the chair, we have budgeted for that uh, in, in your plan. So we are uh, aware this grant was coming. Um, um, it's a big happy for contribution of the money. Okay, thank you. And my other question is on page 503 in the table. All through that table, the second column is the description of the project, and the third column is the grant program. And in the third line okay. down on 503, the project is described as drought resilient through diversification, which really doesn't tell us anything about what the project is. I asked the same question previously. I think it's the solar panels from memory, but can we just change that? Because it's really just repeating what's in column three, and that doesn't tell us anything about what the actual project 
future reports. Chair, no, I don't know we can we can clarify that, but that, that project is uh, an economic development piece around drought resistance, but if we can we can yeah. sharpen that call yeah, so, the next yeah. 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 No, that was all from Mr. Nick. Is there anyone else? Put the motion all those in favor. That's passed. Water and fuel plan 14.7 the recommendations of the report item 14.7 has received the information. We have a seconder, Councillor Hayden. Councillor McKibben, you just move your hand. Yes, I'd like to move the recommendation to receive the report. And I do notice that Pump Station One has had a couple of blockages again, but I won't reiterate on those blockages because I think the community knows they're doing those things. And I understand that the, uh, the press has got a campaign running the Shame people for doing that. <laughs> well, I think I think I did use the word shame. Yeah. You, Councillor Kim. I'm more than happy to uh, second the report. And I hope that we have no more blockages. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyone else? I'll put the motion in favour. Motion is fourteen point eight. So that is the council resolution. It's June twenty three. <laughs> Thank you. Recommendation report item 14.8 is received as information. <laughs> Councillor McKibben. Councillor Tremper. Councillor McKibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to speak on this. As Councillor Tremper said, this is my favourite report, and I can never have this one go without a comment or two. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to see that this that the report is is um, has improved greatly, and I uh, thank all staff for their work on this. In five twenty one, if I could, the policy three five I three, I think it was a travelling stock route. Um, it's noted that there were no submissions received. I'm just wondering, um, technical services or three submissions, technical services director. I actually did make a couple of comments on it. Councillor Graham might have made a couple of comments on it as well in the meet in the meeting. But were those comments taken account of? Uh, through the chair, certainly the verbal commentary yeah, has been taken on board. Um, but again, it went out to uh, public exhibition for further comment. And that was probably being encouraged not there to formalise it, but noting your noting your comments now. Relation that that report needs to come back. I think there was a question of practicality on one issue, yeah. and I uh, there was about having I can't remember making sure you can't uh, your stocker off the road or something at all times, which was impractical. And I think, um, terminology. Councillor Graham talked about terminology. Yes, I think there was something, it's just a, it needs to be pre yeah. Yes, yeah, but there was something I know Councillor Graham made a very in the, in the meeting, so I just wanted to make sure they they were taken account of. Um, the other, um, the, the next one is on the JR the um, sports complex. Just uh, if I could, the top of page 523. Um, and we heard anything back on this, the planning proposal from the New South Department of Planning and Environment? Through the chair. I thought we had. We've had some clarification requests from other planning, but no. No, no um, request or no advice on the determination of this done. And that included to permit a registered flub off of that 31 O'Connell Way over on Drew. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So we haven't had it, haven't heard anything. Drew's yeah, once, once we hear and then once it's confirmed, we can include that. So I was hopeful we might have had something back by. I, I think at the time we threw it up, we were expecting about a two month turnaround. Right, so uh, good to go in early May, didn't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll add a few more notes into the uh, yeah. well, hopefully, when, hopefully when, we get, when we get to the next meeting, we might 
the next note might be successful. All right, I'm happy with the rest of that report, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, through the chair, just the comment from the general manager that one of the planning started, uh, staff indicated last week um, that um, liaison with planning was looking, sort of looking okay, so that seems to be that was that the last one? Thank you, just, thank you, Mr. General Manager. I, I think it's better to put sides up. <laughs> just, don't, just don't laugh. <laughs> um, happy to second. That's on the keeping of the <laughs> All right, uh, Councillor Hayes. Um, on page 527, I, I, do, I, I would like um, if someone could put a note in that regarding um, the 6th of June 2023 from our works committee meeting, um, awaiting outcome of funding locations of yarning circle to be discussed at the Common Working Party. There is no outcome of funding. The funding is there. Um, the statement is the funding will not be given until such time as the common working party makes the agreement. But it's very hard to agree to something when there isn't a um, a, a, a plan um, with everything within that plan. Let's know. No, no. We have Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one query. <laughs> Uh, the first of the Morrison Road Report Review. The, the resolution back in April was in two parts. And uh, so one was it would provide an up, update status report, and the second was following that update status, the council determined whether they require the matter to be referred to ARIC for an independent order. So we certainly number one has been done. We've got that report at the Works Committee meeting earlier this month, but uh, we haven't done number two. So I'd just like to leave that item in this status report, but noting that number one is complete and number two is still pending. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, I thought that was a sort of um, the report was going to occur at works meetings. And if council determined at a works committee in the meeting that it needed to be determined, Eric, we would do it at that time. Mm. It, 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 it was, you know, the ad hoc determination when it was required. Yeah. Yes. And I'm just saying, leave it in yeah. the status report until that happens. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? I'll put the motion all in favor. Okay. Just <clears throat> project paper. All right. <clears throat> Updates open open off the migration update and your recommendations of the report item 14.9 received with information. Councillor Hayden, Councillor Trimbar, Councillor Hayden. Yeah, I'm happy to um move the recommendation to accept that report. I I'm happy to accept that, but I'd like to note something that the system being cloud based, um, after statements made recently, recently by the World Economic Forum, there was a report stating um, from business leaders that they believe that there's a catastrophic cyber event that's coming and cybercrime is going to grow to $10.5 trillion industry by 2025. Um, that's according to the Cyber security ventures that could potentially affect access of any cloud based um, activity or system. And I'm hoping that we've got some kind of manual system as a backup for fail safe if anything like that occur down the track. Uh, through the chair, the, uh, this system is, is built on Microsoft Dynamics, one of the biggest players in, in that space. Um, we, as we develop this, we will look at um, Options to, to be risk it should something like that happen. Like, I mean, it is not that uh, we have a thing that's taken on board. I'm happy to second the report and just to um, compliment the whole team for going through this whole process. 
18 months is a long time. Um, and you probably look like parents with your telling a heart underneath the whole time. So it seems to have gone through very successfully with no breakthrough. So thank you. Well, I'll put the motion in favor. Sorry? Sorry, that's such a stupid comment. Yeah. I said the duck slid, the duck slid in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 14 cents. Cyber policy update patch management. Mm -hmm. And recommendation item 1410 is received as information. Councillor McKibben. And Councillor Hayden. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, look, this was considered in great detail the recommendation um, from ARIC, and I'm pleased to see that it's been included in the cyber policy as agreed with ARIC. And thank you for the markup. It makes it very easy to see where it fits in the cyber policy. Um, and I fully endorse this inclusion, uh, um, as I'm sure the, as will the ARIC committee generally. So thank you, and I'm happy to recommend it. Right. I'll move the motion. All, all in favour? Pass uh, unanimously. 1411, six month delivery plan update. Recommendations of item 1411 is received as information. In the second word, Councillor Hayden. Councillor Tucker. Hayden. Yes, I'm happy to move the recommendation and I think it will speak for itself. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that was a second. I've yeah. got one question. Uh, I admit I haven't read every word. I think that's too busy on the 300 pages of financial stuff. But <laughs> that one is the same record. It's all falling apart. Is that so? <laughs> One thing I did notice is page 542, the top item where it says assist the golf course with plant maintenance and irrigation water. Now, my recollection from when we were considering the additional uh, fuel assistance a couple of months ago, I asked the question um, that, and I believe the answer was that yes, we assist with the fuel and we provide the fuel water or the raw water and that's it and i asked about maintenance of plant and i believe i was told then that no we we don't do maintenance of plant and it's certainly not mentioned in the lease agreement and that would like clarification of whether that is something we do or whether we don't you did the one for one moment through the chair from, from my understanding we, we don't do that the right, so yeah, that note is incorrect. There, there may be small uh, elements of time that we do help out, but it is my understanding that we don't um, do the maintenance on their plan. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to do. So, will there be an amendment to delete those words? Or? From the, from the, from the, I guess the chair will do an update on and do a clarification on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more? Uh, so I, I'm happy with the update and uh, I did go through it. I noticed that's um, in the community wellbeing theme. We're almost 50% of those have been completed. Great to see. And growing the economy, we're getting there. About 33% of those have been completed. The other areas, we're still obviously working hard on, but um, it's just great to see the update and the progress that we've been making. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll put the motion in. All that in favor? All right. All right, there's no urgent business. I'm like, uh, in accordance with the Local Government Act of 1993 and the Local Government General Regulations of 2005 and the opinion of the General Manager, the following businesses of a kind are referred to in the Section 10A2 of the Act and should be dealt with in part of the meeting close to the media and the public. Yeah. And I'll ask for moving the second of the meeting with the queue, Councillor McKibben and Councillor Hayden. I'd like to thank members of the public for joining us this evening and say good night. And 
Only then last day I'll ask you to do this. The following resolutions were made during the section of the meeting that was closed to the public, and there were no members of the public present at the time or on Zoom. Item 1601. Section 356 additional information to make request that council consider that the tender requests uh, were supported and will be placed on public exhibition for 28 days, and that evaluations <coughs> of applications for funding for the 23 24 section 356 donation period are closed for the year unless extenuating circumstances are presented. <coughs> Item 1602, plant tender backhoe replacement. The resolution was resolved that in accordance with tender T2023 slash seven, proceed with the purchase of one new 2023 Caterpillar 432 backhoe loader in accordance with the tender report. And often the existing 2009 Caterpillar 432E backhoe loader, following delivery of the new to 2023 Caterpillar 432 back to the overload. Item 16.3, tender 2023 slash 8, plant tender, truck and trailer replacement. In accordance with the 2023 slash 8 tender, proceed with the purchase of one new 2024 Kenworth bogey drive truck and tipper and three axle tipping trailer at a cost in accordance with the tender report with a variance of 5%. Auction the existing 2010 Western Star fitted with aluminium Sloan built tipping body and a 2010 three axle Sloan built tipping trailer following delivery of a new Kenworth, <laughs> four Kenworth truck with aluminium tipper and three axle long trailer. The next ordinary meeting of the Overall Council will be held on Tuesday, the 18th of July, 2023, commencing at 5.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers, over on Street Pavilion. I now declare the meeting closed at 8.39 p.m. Thank you, councillors, and thank you, everyone else who has been attending or during this meeting on Zoom. Good day, thank you.